Well, hello everyone and welcome back to If the Creek Don't Rise. We like all things heartfelt and homey around here and if you do too, you've come to the right place. I am going to show you today some of the things we've been eating around here lately. All delicious, easy, quick to put together. I hope that you will find some inspiration as you watch this week's What's for Dinner video. Maybe find some things that you forgot about or something new that you may want to add into your meal plan. All right, everybody, let's just jump right on into the video. So glad to have you here. All right, I'm going to start out this video with this soup that I made. This was a cheesy ham and potato soup, and I have made soup like this many times. But for some reason, this one tasted so very delicious. I think it was just the flavor of the spiral ham. It just had a good smoky flavor. It was just so good. So while I'm dicing up my potatoes here, I'm going to tell you what I've been doing. Um, on Mondays, I've been making a pot of soup. Not every Monday, but since it's been cold, I have been making a pot of soup pretty regularly on Mondays. And my plan is to do that on throughout this cold season. So I think I'll just start out my videos the same way, showing you what soup I have made for that week, if I've made one. So I'm chopping up my potatoes here. I want these a pretty small dice. And then I'm going to go in here with a half an onion and get that in the pot as well. Just let these things start cooking up together. All right, now to my potatoes, onions, and water. I am putting a good, generous sprinkling of garlic powder. This is some chicken uh, bouillon powder. I'm going in with that. It's gonna be some great flavoring, and I'm adding in some parsley flakes. I am not adding salt because the chicken bouillon powder is a salty uh, flavor already, and of course the ham here. So I will add salt later if it needs. Also, I'm adding cheese. So. I want to not put salt in at this point because I probably uh, could risk over salting it and I don't want to do that. So this is my beautiful spiral ham leftover from Christmas. And so I'm just going to go in and take a chunk off here. I probably want, oh, I don't know, three or four cups of ham. I'm going to dice that pretty small based on about the same size as I did the potatoes. And then with that beautiful ham, I'm going to get that all packaged up here in a minute for the freezer, and I'll show you that. But right now, I'm going to work on getting this ham diced up. Now, what I wanted to tell you about making the soup on Monday, how it works well for us here, I use Monday and have for years and years for my basically reset for my house. So laundry, cleaning, getting things back in order, kind of planning out my week, that kind of thing. That's what I usually do on Monday. So it's been so nice having a pot of soup boiling on the stove um, on the day that I'm working here in the house and just kind of getting everything back in order, getting everything tidied up and cozy here in the home. It's been working out just great. I really have enjoyed that. And then of course our leftovers have been wonderful for lunches or even for dinner the next night if we go that route. It's just been a nice way to start the week and so like I said I feel like last year and the year before even I just didn't get enough soups in like I wanted to during the cold season so I'm making a valiant effort here to turn that around for this year all right now that this is all in the pot I'm going to turn up my heat and get those potatoes cooked through I'm going to use my fork here just to test doneness to see if they are at the right tenderness and they were so then I'll start adding in dairy you don't want to add any dairy while your heat is uh, up real, real high you don't want to risk burning cheese or scalding the milk or getting things stuck on the bottom so I've reduced my heat a little bit and I'm coming in with just what I had left on a block of Velveeta. And I've got this all cubed up and then I've just got this Mexican style. It's basically got Monterey Jack, cheddar, no seasonings in this whatsoever. Just some good variety of cheeses in that bag. So I've added that in because that's what I had today to work with. And I've cut the heat back a little bit, but not too, too low. I want to go ahead and get this cheese melted down. And I'm basically just going to stand here right with it, stir it for the most part until it's melted down. And believe me, it doesn't take long. This is a hot pot here. So once this cheese is melted down, 
Then I will go in with my milk and let the milk heat through. You see here that I'm adding in some black pepper. Now a potato soup, one that has milk product in it, is not one that you can simmer all day on the stove. You can simmer it up to the milk point, but you can't continue simmering it too much after that. Once you get your milk in there, it's pretty much time to serve. Like to just turn the heat off and let this sit here it's so hot already it's going to need to cool down a little bit anyway and as it does it thickens the cheese the potatoes everything working together there just causes that broth to thicken up just right and so here is the bowl that i had this evening i just sprinkled a little bit more parsley on the top and then just put some croutons on there and like i said this was so good i really think the flavor of that spiral ham which is also very good by the way um, i think it just flavored up this cheesy ham and potato soup just right we loved this now, as the potato soup was cooking uh, and I was here in the kitchen, I went ahead and took this ham apart. So you can see this big bag here is full of ham slices and I have it labeled on here that it's a family size amount. So meaning like family night or you know, a pretty large batch of ham is what's in there. And I wanted those in slices. We could have it for breakfast, something like that. And then here I've got three cups of diced ham in this bag. And then this last one is the big ham bone. Still has some ham on it, as you can see. And this will be cooked in uh, pinto beans. I love ham and beans. And so that will all go in the freezer for some delicious meals coming up. Good morning everyone. I am starting some chicken in the crock pot. What I have here are two, I'll just show you, they're two very large bone-in chicken breasts. And I love having those, hang on. I love having bone-in chicken breast um, because anytime you want to have some yummy broth, having um, bone-in chicken of course is awesome now I'm not gonna go real heavy here with the salt because I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this just yet I just know that I have it and I'm gonna use it and it's gonna be some yummy broth as well so I've got some pieces of onion down here in the bottom of a bowl I have the rest of the onion too but I'm gonna use these small onion pieces and then maybe just a slice here you can go um, all kinds of ways with broth and ordinarily I would put more stuff in than what I'm putting in today but I'm using what I have I have some garlic here I'm gonna put some of this in and that's probably it for today I'm gonna pop the lid on my chicken will cook and I'll have some delicious broth of course I'll bring you along for whatever I end up deciding to use this chicken for all right, I got the garlic all in. That's gonna be awesome. And now I'm gonna just pour in the water. Gonna add just a little bit more. I don't wanna go quite to the top, but close. That's about 11 cups of water, I think. I think that's looking good. Okay, this is gonna go on high for about four hours. All right, let's see what's going on in here. Wow, the smell. Those are all done. They've been in the crock pot since about 10.30, about four and a half hours now. So I'm gonna get these out and let them cool. And I can take them off the bone and look at that broth. Oh, it's going to be so good. Literally just comes apart. So easy. Just pull these bones right off of there. And of course this is still screaming hot. But just shows you how quick. And then those little pieces of garlic. Definitely not going to throw those out. I'll just kind of smush those up. And just go right in here and 
take this thing apart. So I'm just gonna basically kind of do this so it will start cooling and I can get all the bones out of it. So flavorful, bone and chicken is the most flavorful chicken that you will get. All right, that's a lot of chicken that came off of there. My estimation is probably about four cups. Four to five cups, I would say. I could be off a little bit, but look at that. It's awesome, shredded up and ready to go. All right, I'm gonna be making the crescent rolls um, that you fill up with chicken and ranch and cheese. I think they're called pillow pockets or chicken puffs. I don't know. I'm not sure what the name is called. I've made this on my channel a couple times before, but I used about a half a package of this ranch dressing. Just wanna season the chicken really well before you do anything else to it. You don't want it too salty because cheese goes in it. So about half a package of ranch dressing, I'm gonna get that tossed around, probably put a little bit of black pepper in here, and then I'm gonna add in a few frozen mixed vegetables and some cheese. And then that'll be the filling that goes inside my crescents. And then you make a little gravy on top with some cream of chicken soup, and they are delicious. I will link below where I have made these a couple of different videos, and you can check those out if you want to. All right, I did a little sample here of the filling. It tastes amazing. It's about a cup of mixed vegetables. And I put a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I think it was a Colby Jack, actually. And this tastes really good. It tastes seasoned just great. So it's actually, this is kind of like a little chicken pot pie puff, actually. It's what's making me think of. Um, so now I'm just gonna get my crescents and start filling them, and closing them up and making these little bundles or pockets or puffs, whatever you wanna call them, filled with this goodness. Oh, yum, yum, it's gonna be so good. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, tear my time. Just enjoy the ride. I know man passing by. So the mixture I have here in the bottom of my pan, it's one can of cream of chicken soup mixed with one can of milk. I put a little bit in the bottom of the pan and I'm gonna start placing in all of these crescents that are filled with this yummy goodness. And um, once I'm all finished here, like you can see now, I'm gonna go back in with what's left of that chicken soup mixture. Over the top, I'm gonna to put a little bit of cheese on top of that. And I just so regret that I rushed out the door without getting a video of this. I was taking this to my niece who had just had a baby and um, her and her husband. And so uh, I didn't get a video of this, but it was so, so, pretty it puffed up just perfectly golden brown I made mashed potatoes and green beans and delivered that to them look below I have made this like I said a couple times a couple variations I'll have those in the description box and I'll also have a recipe um, very similar to what I made here today this is really good you ought to give this one a try Are you ever in the mood for just a snacky appetizer style dinner? That's what we were in the mood for tonight. Let me show you all the things that I made here. We have been on a jalapeno popper a kick lately. My husband James loves these especially. I do too, but he really loves them and I just don't often think to make them. So it's so simple. You just take your jalapenos, cut them down uh, the center there, take out the seeds and the ribs. Um, if you want to not have such a spicy one that is and then you just fill it with cream cheese um, After I did that I went in and sprinkled some garlic powder all over the top and then you just take a piece of bacon I just ripped it in half there I'm just gonna wrap it all around and then you just bake these in the oven I think I baked them for about 20 25 minutes on probably 350 375 and you just want to get your bacon uh, You know cooked all the way through Okay, 
for the chicken wings honestly James makes these more often than I do but I just took the chicken wings plain spread them out here on these cooling racks on top of my baking sheet baked them in the oven until they were almost done before I put any seasonings on and then I just went in my spice cabinet I've just got some paprika some garlic powder um, this is some Lowry seasoning salt just whatever I found in my spice cabinet that I knew would be good on these and then I am going to put just a little bit of barbecue on each one not a bunch I'm gonna brush that on to get these back in the oven we like these to get pretty crispy on the outside kind of dry them out just a little bit and then of course we can do more barbecue um, I also used some of the uh, buffalo sauce on about half of them and they baked up just perfectly and now here are my jalapeno poppers out of the oven look how good these are the bacon got all crisped up as well we just enjoyed this snacky appetizer dinner i just did some um, of our favorite restaurant style the extra crispy fries in the air fryer and they were just perfect and this was just what we were wanting it hit the spot For this last meal I'm going to show you it started around this mushroom risotto my husband James really loves this and he picks up a couple bags every time he goes to Trader Joe's so I was trying to think what I would make for him to go along with that and he loves steak so much too and had mentioned wanting steak so I pulled out this extra large t-bone out of our freezer and I'm just going to go in here and basically debone it I'm going to get all of the meat taken off the bone and the fat taken off the meat and I'm going to actually pan fry this up a super cold today I'm making this and so I just decided I'm going to take it off the bone and pan fry it to go with this risotto this is about as simple as you could get we have beef onions and butter frying up in the skillet and my goodness gracious at the flavor that's just right here in this one pan I don't cook this up for long um, because I want the steak bites to be about medium and it really does pan fry up very quickly and look how much meat came off of just that one t-bone steak Now onto the risotto, all you do is put a little bit of water in the bottom of the pan per package directions, put in the whole mixture that's in the bag. It's got the seasoning in there, it's got the big chunks of mushroom, it cooks up so very quickly and it's a very rich and delicious side dish. This is basically a steak and onion risotto bowl, if you want to call it that. Um, James loved this so very much, it was really delicious and uh, just hit the spot for him several of his favorite things right here together uh, especially now that I'm going to top it with Parmesan cheese all right y'all thank you so much for stopping by my channel I hope you enjoyed this video give it a big thumbs up if you did and to all of my current subscribers thank you so much to the new ones welcome I'm so glad to have you and if you haven't hit that red subscribe button yet go ahead what you waiting on I will see you all next time good lord willing and the creek don't rise